The number of secondary pupils on the autistic spectrum now stands at around 1 in 100. And whilst inclusion seems to happen quite naturally at primary level, in the larger world of a secondary school, a lack of awareness can leave ASD pupils isolated and vulnerable. Hi, I'm John and I have an autistic spectrum disorder. I may look like your average 20 year old, but there are subtle differences in the way that I act compared to your average 20 year old. I have special interests which can border on the obsessive and I also have trouble dealing with social situations, dealing with conversations, knowing when to take turns for instance. So lots of difficulties basically involving communication and talking and listening to people. Back at school, all these differences made it difficult for me to fit in. I didn't understand the unwritten rules that everyone else seemed to live by. Get to the back! Unpredictability caused me anxiety, and I found it hard to relate to anyone else. My time at school was miserable, and no one could tell me why. This programme is about ASD, and in particular, ASD in schools. My brother had a much more successful time than I did in school. He achieved 11 A stars in his GCSEs and also received letters telling him that he was in the top five marks in the country for three of his subjects. I'm told I'm just as clever as my brother, so what was it about my experience at school that made it so difficult for me to cope? Well, for a start, I went to a comprehensive school, which meant that many of the people that were there didn't really actively want to learn and in many cases sought to make my life as difficult as possible. There were also difficulties involving being right and making work perfect. I felt personally insulted if the teacher told me off. It's a look. Wow, have you done all this? There were also the problems of misinterpretation of school rules. Being autistic, I followed them almost to the letter, whereas in fact that really wasn't necessary. The real build-up for me happened when it came to exam time, not only because of the stress of exams, but also the fact that I was faced with so many difficult and different choices. Choices of whether to go to college, whether to start work. And actually this made it very stressful and very difficult for me, and indeed led to a breakdown in the end. So, at just 15, I ended my school days on a psychiatric ward rather than in an exam hall. Of course, not everyone with ASD goes through mental illness, but for me, being diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome was a fresh start. It was only then that everything began to make sense. People like me are often referred to as being on the autistic spectrum. But what exactly does this mean? Here's Mike Collins to tell us more. In the 1940s in the United States, uh, Leo Kanner was working initially with a small group, 11 children, and he identified some common factors um, and characteristics that they were displaying, problems with social empathy, uh, communication, and the way in which they thought. Um, at the same time, in uh, Austria, Hans Asperger was doing some similar work, and he was also identifying this very similar group of children, although the group he was working with were more able, generally, and all had at least language, where many of the children that Kanna was working with didn't have language. I think this is why we call it an autistic spectrum, and within that autistic spectrum there are various subgroups, and we tend to refer to Kanna's autism as classic autism, and Asperger's or high-functioning people with autism uh, at the, the sort of top end, if you like, of the, of the spectrum. So that's the theory, but what about the reality? I have a very good degree of self-awareness and I know that many of my special interests can border on the obsessional. One example of this is buses. I'm an avid fan of buses and love nothing more than collecting timetables and noting down registration plates. But it would be wrong to think that everyone on the spectrum has exactly the same traits. Take Anthony. He was five years old when his parents were told he was autistic. Having a child with autism uh, means adjusting your day-to-day -day life to allow your child to fit in yeah. and, and be comfortable with what you're doing. Things most parents take for granted, like a walk to the park or a trip to the shops, you're always thinking yeah, of something yeah. ju just in yeah. case something pops up. You've got up. to plan your route carefully. Yeah. yeah. What happens if if something goes wrong while you're there? You know. Anthony experiences um, like an information overload sometimes. If there's too much noise or there's too much, something too busy um, too, going on. Too much movement yeah. around it. Anything like that can can overload his senses, um, and it, it's, it's uncomfortable for him. For Anthony, I think autism's trying to fit into a world that doesn't really fit in with, with his way of thinking. 
people on the spectrum are sometimes described as isolated in their own world. So how do teachers get more insight into this world? I've come here to Autism West Midlands to meet with Sue Hatton. She's going to show us an easier way to understand autism. The key theory involves three main areas of difficulty, known as the triad of impairments, and it can be a tricky concept to juggle with. <laughs> Not desperately proficient. <laughs> Those three balls actually represent three areas of difficulty that all people who have an autistic spectrum disorder have. Would you like to go on and tell us a bit about them? The first is to do with communication. I particularly try to get across that for able people with ASD who talk a lot, they still have a communication difficulty. For example, with yourself, you're a very articulate and able speaker, but sometimes you will talk incessantly about the thing yes. that's of interest to you and you don't pick up the fact that somebody else wants to say something. In a school setting, a young person might appear to be rather rude, um, not paying attention to a teacher, not aware of other people who want to speak, and that can make them appear to be something that they're not, yes. when actually it's because they've got a communication difficulty. And then people have difficulty with social interaction, that's the sort of second area, and of course it's very closely related with communication. I think the key thing about social interaction is that people with ASD don't really develop social nous. That's the best way I think I can explain it. So things like knowing when to say hello and who to say hello to. Issues like eye contact and how much eye contact to give. Knowing how to make friends, what friendship really is about. These are all areas for which you need social nous. And then the third area of the triad is often referred to as the impairment of the imagination. But it's really about inflexibility of thinking and wanting things to happen in, in a pattern, and often in quite a rigid pattern. The fact that people with ASD tend to have very inflexible thought patterns, like things to work in an order and for the pattern to be kept, like things to be predictable. Of course, in schools, things never stay the same. Supply teachers cover lessons at the last minute, classes might double up, and predictability goes out of the window. For pupils like Anthony, a desire for the predictable affects both school and home life. Anthony always likes to know the time things are happening so he can look at a clock. Um, I think he finds a lot of security in a clock or a watch. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, he always wants to know in advance when something's happening. I mean, we, we've even done timetables at home, haven't we, for weekends, yeah. for holidays, when there's going to be periods of change. And he's, he's, sometimes he'll say to us now, before we forget, will you do me a timetable? So he, he knows what he, what he feels comfortable with. But autism isn't as simple as just three areas of difficulty. I usually say to staff, they must remember that all those areas of difference and difficulty are overlaid by the way that a person senses the world. People with ASD tend to sense the world in different ways. They may be hypersensitive to hearing, they may have things visually that distract them, they're quite likely to have issues around touch and taste and smell. And these are all things that compound the difficulty of coping in a mainstream school environment. I mentioned earlier that there were many things about myself and my Asperger's that I didn't understand. And one of the most major ones for me was this, a yellow card with the word lunch written on it. Now, this was actually given to me at school and it was used as a means of sorting the lunch queue, but it quickly became something for me that provided real tactile satisfaction and pleasure. And this kind of evolved into the fact that when I am feeling stressed or feeling low or feeling upset, I need to sort of flick it like this. Um, and actually, this gives me, like I said, a real sense of tactile satisfaction. It, it actually ruined a holiday in Blackpool because I didn't take it with me. And actually, I spent the whole week almost worrying about the fact that I hadn't got it. I eventually realised I could make a new one, although it must be made to the same specifications and still have the word lunch written on it. That's autism for you. Feelings and emotional responses are something people on the spectrum have trouble with. For me, 9-11 was a classic example. I came home from school and, um, you know, this, this terrible, horrible, horrific mm. event was unfolding before the eyes of the world. Mm. And I, I watched the TV for about an hour. And my mum came in and obviously she was almost in tears. She was, you know, she was very upset and everyone around me, you know, all my neighbours, everyone that I could see was upset. And this is completely true. I turned to my mum and said, Mum, why have they taken the kids' programming off? Why isn't, why isn't CITV on? Mm -hmm. And actually, I couldn't, or at that stage, there wasn't the same emotional reaction in me 
as there was in other people. Because I, again, back to this lack of imagination, mm. because I couldn't imagine what it must be like to be trapped mm. in a tower that you know is going to collapse mm. or to be hit by a plane. To me, the most concerning thing of that whole issue was that they were going to cancel the football, which they did, and that my programmes weren't mm. on. And that seems incredibly insensitive. And that's an extreme example, but actually it happens mm. a lot with people with autism. You had difficulty in two areas. You had difficulty coping with the fact that things were changing because you like and need predictability. And also, you have difficulty actually seeing things from other people's point of view. Um, we talk about theory of mind in autism training and the fact that people with an ASD have a poor theory of mind and they develop it later. And theory of mind is very much about an ability to empathise. Empathy plays a big part in making friends and I still struggle to keep the friends I do make for me, though, love and a serious relationship is still uncharted territory. There are many examples in film and literature of characters who are on the spectrum. Dustin Hoffman's 1988 film Rain Man featured a main character who was autistic, and more recently, Mark Hannon's book The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime spoke from the point of view of a young boy with Asperger's. The policeman squatted down beside me and said, Would you like to tell me what's going on here, young man? I sat up and said, the dog is dead. I got that far, he said. I said, I think someone killed the dog. How old are you, he asked. I replied, I am 15 years and three months and two days. Did you kill the dog, he asked. I said, I did not kill the dog. The policeman took hold of my arm and lifted me onto my feet. I didn't like him touching me like this. And this is when I hit him. A violent reaction to physical contact can be the first way a child with ASD responds. And it's easy to see how this would be challenging in a school situation. With 70% of children on the spectrum now educated in a mainstream setting, teachers need to learn as much as possible to understand the condition. I guess I've learned a lot about myself in the past few years since getting my diagnosis of Asperger's. These days, I work in a care home for adults with severe autism, and there isn't a day that goes by when I don't learn something, both about myself and about the condition in general. Hopefully, there's been something here that you found useful too. Before I go, here are a few pointers on how to work better with young people on the autistic spectrum. Looking after someone with autism as a child or as a, a pupil, you need bucket loads of patience. I think loads you need of a patience, good sense of humour. Good sense of humour. You a very need to, calm yeah. personality. Yeah, I think you need to start every day afresh. Be careful in the use of language. Keep it clear, keep it short and keep it concise. For children with ASD, we talk too much. There's too much language. Children with ASD have difficulty processing the language. Far better if there was less of it.